Let's give you an idea as we check our countdown clock. We're about 16 minutes away. We're waiting for word from NASA Mission Control that we are a go to talk to astronauts Victor Glover and Kate Rubens. This is Capcom. This, these are the people that we're communicating with. They're going to give us word when we can check in with them. Again, they are high above the Earth's atmosphere in outer space, along with the other members of the International Space Station. But two of them, California's own, are going to be talking to us. So let's just tune in and see what happens. They're going to let us know. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is the International Space Station. We are ready for the event. Good day, LA. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Good Day, LA. How do you hear me? Good day, LA, and welcome to the International Space Station. We have you loud and clear. Wonderful to talk to you both. We are so excited and so thrilled to talk to two of our most honored Californians, Kate, Victor. First of all, we are so thrilled to see you. Kate, tell me, what are you most excited about learning and discovering during, during your time there on the space station? It's wonderful to talk to you guys, and it's it's been such an incredible mission scientifically. One of the things we're working on right now is actually um, some nematodes. They're worms that either have the muscular dystrophy gene or don't. And we're looking at how their mechanosensing and their neurosensing changes during spaceflight with microscopy. It's been fascinating. We can see it on the high-definition microscope up here. Wow. Kate, of course, is a microbiologist, so this is a fascinating uh, set of uh, re research and, and uh, uh, investigations that you were doing. Victor, when we look at your training, years and years of research, preparation, uh, uh, all that has gone into getting you both to the space station, was there anything still that surprised you about living aboard the International Space Station? Yes, great, great question. You know, there's uh, a lot of different aspects that I could talk about, but the one thing that really stood out when I first got here was how much concentration everything took. Some of the things we take for granted on the ground, just being able to set something down and then come back and find it in that place doesn't work up here. And so everything took an immense amount of concentration and attention. Uh, you know, this is modified living for both of you. We know you spend hours coordinating experiments, doing spacewalks. But in your downtime, Kate, how different is downtime on the space station than it is here on Earth? In some ways, it's very different, and in some ways, it's much like a, a Saturday on Earth. Um, Ike and I were just talking about books that we plan to read this weekend coming up, and uh, you know, we do we do normal things as a crew. We watch movies together, but we also have the option to do things on the weekend, like watch the planet go by, and we can get lost in the cupola. I have spent uh, an orbit is 90 minutes, and I've spent an entire orbit around the planet, uh, where, where you start from one place, and it's 45 minutes of light, and then 45 minutes of dark and I don't even know that 90 minutes has gone by because it's just so fascinating and beautiful to watch out the window. Fascinating view that you get and the fact that time sort of stands still. We know that NASA's already well into the Artemis project of which both of you are a part of that program, the first woman and next man back to the surface of the moon. Talk about the significance and how excited you are to be included in that program at this point, Victor. Well, you know, it is a, a true honor to be a part of the Artemis team, and uh, I'm excited about NASA's efforts to get us back to the moon sustainably so that we can, uh, can, can 
stay there and do research in, in you know, lunar orbit as well as getting ourselves on the way to Mars and testing out new exploration technologies that are going to help us get humanity to Mars. And so whatever my part is, whether it's working in mission control, talking to the astronauts that are up there, or being on one of those crews myself, I look forward to seeing what NASA does in the Artemis program. Kate, how much time do you get to uh, reconnect with home? Connection is such an important thing for, for us humans. How, do you, how often do you get to connect with home? We do get one video call a week to talk to our, our family and our friends, um, and then we get a few events. So I just did something uh, yesterday evening with Stanford Medical School, and that was a lot of fun to talk to uh, undergraduates, medical students, uh, postdocs submitted their questions, and we got to answer them. So it, it, it's wonderful to talk to friends and family, but it's also really neat to get to connect with places that we've been with uh, earlier in our lives and, and get to, I, I just love talking to students. That's, that's really one of the joys up here. Well then, this is a perfect segue. Aroxia, you've got some questions submitted to us from some local students. Some smart local students. That's right. All right, Victor and Kate, here we go. Lightning round. Let's start with a question from Jamie Esquivel, who is in the fifth grade at Sally Ride Elementary School. He wants to know, how has learning about the Milky Way galaxy helped us here on Earth? Great question, Jamie. You know, that's and that's a big question. Learning about the Milky Way has, has, has pushed us to advance technology in a way that has benefited us by things like the global positioning system, GPS, that many of us take for granted. Being able to pull out your cell phone or smart device and see where you are on the planet. Uh, solar batteries, uh, sorry, solar arrays that, you know, take the sun's energy and turn it into electrical power. Batteries, battery technology. So the things that it takes to do the exploration of, of our galaxy and our home planet, our, our neighbors in the the night sky has pushed technology that enable uh, our society, things that we just depend on day in and day out. Okay, you guys have amazing answers, but we got to keep them tight because I want to get through some of these questions and answers. Aaliyah Henson Price, a, a seventh grader at Fleming Middle School Science and Technology Magnet, wants to know, what do you think of the newly discovered heated planet? Leah, that is a great question. I think everything that's going on right now with uh, with looking at uh past our universe and astrobiology and thinking about other habitable worlds is fascinating. One of the things that I'm most interested in as we find these places is could there be life there? Uh, could there be chemical signatures? So uh, it just means that we're living in an age where wonderful and amazing discoveries are happening. All right, here is a twofold. Maya Henry, a ninth grader at the Girls Academic Leadership Academy asks, do you believe that further exploring space in search of another planet for humans to live on once Earth is beyond salvaging is ethical? And how has working at the International Space Station impacted your opinion? Well, that is a really deep question. I think it is. As long as we aren't using that as an excuse to give up on our beautiful planet home Earth, like the previous question, there are worlds out there that we find that are in what we call the habitable zone, but we have yet to find life. So it means that Earth is special and we have to continue to treat it as special. And that my, my belief that Earth is special has only grown stronger being up here and seeing it the way it truly is without lines, borders, and words uh, on a map. One last question, Michaela, back with you. A final word for budding uh, astro astronauts and young stargazers that are watching, kiddos that look just like the two of you, all the kids around the globe. What can they be doing now to start working towards getting to where you are? science and math and everybody says that um, but my advice is to be incredibly persistent about it to find what's joyful in science and math and to make it not a hard and a challenging thing it can't be hard and challenging but find what aspect it is about science technology math aerospace you love and you want to do and that will get you through the hard stuff it will get you through the problem sets and the difficult classes and be something that you want to wake up every single day in your career this has been such
such a joy for all of us. You continue to do all the things that you do representing the state of California. Thank you so much for making time for us. Pomona proud, Napa proud. There are kids and families watching at this hour. Victor Glover, Katie Rubin's doing incredible work at the International Space Station. Our big thanks to NASA for making this happen. Say one last wave goodbye to your families. Give them some love from the International Space Station. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> As we say goodbye. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Oh, big hugs. That's wonderful. How? And off they go. Oh. <laughs> this is Mrs. Houston ACR. What an exit. That's, that's even better Houston than a Michael mic drop. Uh, oh, and oh, <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, my goodness. The marvels of technology. Bob, Roxia, this has been oh my so incredibly special. Now, what will happen is NASA will connect them with uh, the next TV station, which I believe is in Chicago, and they'll get a chance to talk to the astronauts the same way we did. This was such an honor for us here at Good Day LA. The, the, cat, the picture stays up for now, uh, but we don't have uh, communication with them anymore. Um, I think this is one of those pinch me broadcast moments, isn't it, Bob? That was great. Absolutely. <laughs> what, I, what I like about it also is that, you know, we're seeing that science continues, all the great work is being done despite the pandemic that, you know, all of this stuff is, is, is being done. I was most impressed also by the questions from right. the students. I mean, I was gonna ask like, you know, where do they go to the bathroom and stuff like that? And they had some like <laughs> amazing questions. Oh, that's great. Oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> Talking about I'm busy. I literally could cry um, right now. This is so no, amazing. but the que you're right, Bob. The questions they asked that last one, I had to read it a few times to be like, wait, what? I want to make sure I get this right. Uh, really, really, thank you for submitting those questions to our local students. But do you guys find that while watching this, you have to remind yourself yes. that they're up there, yes. we are here, this is happening, hundreds mm -hmm. of it's miles just away, unbelievable. Right? Mm -hmm. And by the way, we actually we were trying. Bob, you're telling us about there's you can get online and, and you can track where the space station is. For those of you that enjoy this kind of thing the way we do, um, you can join in and kind of track where it's going. It's there, there are ways to track, and not and not just that. So when they do come over our space, what's amazing about it is that you can actually see mm -hmm. the space station yeah. stream across there. the sky, which which is, which is just incredible to know that we have these great astronauts up there that are doing this amazing work for us and in, in, in advancing medicine and technology and we're learning so much from from up there in space. I think it's Incredible. also really instructive for all of us to see that, you know, these are two people that come from our state, right? Mm -hmm. Young people uh, mm -hmm. that some science teacher urged along. Mm -hmm. Now you look at their resumes and CVs, you guys, when I was doing background research on them, they have resumes and CVs the size of your arm. I mean, <laughs> they, these are well learned, well uh, read, very, very smart, very intelligent, uh, the accolades line, and but as regular as rain, right? Mm -hmm. Look at how excited mm -hmm. they still right? are to be in space. Well, Michaela, uh, my little guy, uh, he's actually watching you talk to them right now. Uh, it, it, well, at the beginning you of the something? interview. So he's learning a lot. And just like you said, you know, what's happening right now is teaching the, the young um, on what to do to get to where well, they that's, are. That last question was exactly for Jax and other kiddos like that. Because yeah. at some point, these two were kids in, that was in my, school. That was my favorite answer for him is yeah. when mm -hmm. Victor Glover says, you know, yeah. We're gonna. We're looking at other planets and where we can live on other planets, but let's not give up on Earth. Mm -hmm. Nope. Right. Let's, let's not, not give. give up on our own. Yeah. Well, that was fun. We need to take a commercial break so we can all. How do you talk down. that? We don't. We, I don't think we do. <laughs> we went to outer space, yo. We'll be right back. It's only 7:10. I know. Or 7:15. <laughs> Whatever time it is. 7:25.